All right, on this particular tree, we've got a lead that we stripped the brush off of that needs to come out. We've got a block set high in the tree, a lowering line going through the block, tied near the top of this long lead that we want to take out. We're going to take it out in one piece and set the thing down very slowly and quietly. The one thing we do with this winch system is quiet rigging. We take big pieces, we're able to use the mechanical advantage that the winch gives us to pull these pieces up toward a rigging point and lift them under a controlled manner and set them down nice and quietly. So with the rigging point above the winch, we're going to use this upper fair lead. If you come through that fair lead, you come straight through it, you're going to be on the right side of the drum, which automatically leads you to winding the rope clockwise the proper direction. You always have to wind the rope clockwise. We have these warning stickers that show up all the way around the base of the drum uh, to remind you to wind clockwise. That is absolutely critical. To get the most efficiency out of the winch, we need the most rope surface area contacting the winch drum area. So we load the rope of the winch up with as many wraps as will comfortably fit. This is a 5 8 rope. We get four wraps on there. And the final wrap will, has to come over this peeler arm. And then the peeler arm leads the rope right into the jaw, this slot. This round slot that goes all the way around the top of the drum. This slot is formed by two spring-loaded jaws, which form the self-tailing unit. So now the rope is locked off. And I'll put the handle in, hold it with one hand, push the thumb lever over, pop it in. Turning the handle clockwise, it has us in high gear, which is about a four to one gear reduction. When you turn the handle in the counterclockwise direction, and that's approximately a 13 to one gear reduction. And uh, we're going to take the slack out of this rope, preload it so we can start our cut. So we're going to go in the clockwise direction in the high gear until it gets kind of tough. Just go to the counterclockwise direction, which puts us in the low gear range. I'm really going to take the stretch out of this piece. You know you've developed a lot of tension and you're able to play a note. You're able to take all the stretch out of these double braid ropes, or nearly all the stretch out. And uh, something else to consider is when you're putting the mount on, another note to consider is how taut that strap is. And you'll find on a new system that uh, there will be some stretch in the strap, so if you, you may have to retension the strap a notch or two. Just about ready to cut. But if you look at the angle of this piece, the rigging point is off that way. The piece itself wants is angled out to my left. So when, when we release the butt, uh, we're going to release this giant pendulum. Because the piece is fairly ver uh, fairly vertical, uh, we didn't need to make a giant wide open base here. Um, I, I think this will be adequate so when we tip it toward the rigging point. A guy my age usually needs to revert to low gear in a big hurry. It's actually moving quite easily. So I'm going to take a walk back here and check my hinge, see how it's doing. Yeah, it's actually opening up quite nicely. Our butt line isn't impeding the movement of the hinge. So I'll tension it a little bit more, and then I'll come back and nip away at that last little bit of hinge wood. A couple more 
more clicks, I should be able to lift that butt off of the shelf. Mm. And that's it. Now I'll ease the porter wrap very slowly. What we're going to do here is I'm going to go over to the winch, take the handle out, release the load until the piece is nearly touching the ground. I flip the pigtail up, I keep tension in the tail, and I keep the rope wraps perpendicular to the drum, just as they're wrapped on the drum. So I've got, I've got some tension in the tail. It doesn't take a lot of work to do that. And now I put it through the pigtail so I can watch the piece. I don't have to worry about feeding the rope onto the drum. I can watch the piece. I can actually walk out here and if I had to, I could control that butt. Grab this tag line and pull it wherever I needed to. So it's just about above the ground. I don't want to put weight on it because that'll make, a, make it hard to saw. What I'm going to do, I keep the tension on here. I take it out of the pigtail. Take the wrap, put it back into the self-tailor. Now that piece is locked off. And on a crowded job site where there's guys running around, I'll take an extra wrap just so somebody doesn't kick the rope out of that pigtail. Or out of that self-tailor, I'm sorry. Same way as before, keeping tension in the tail, carefully unwrapping, keeping tension, using the big tail, easing her down, locking off through the self tailor, and then again taking that extra rest. Keeping my wraps in the same line as they were as I'm unwrapping them, and always use the pigtail for lowering. I don't have to worry about where the rope is going because the, the fair leads keep the rope from crossing over. And I always tell people when you're done, you got the piece set on the ground, whip your wraps off, take the rope off completely. That saves you a lot of grief. Greg, before you cut, I'm going to get a little tension on it. Okay, Rip Tompkins, a royalty on that. <laughs> All right, we're using a Milwaukee whole hog drill that has reverse gear. With reverse gear on the drill, we're using the low gear range on the winch, which allows us to lift pretty good sized loads.
Oh, oh, oh. 